And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Scienceandpublicpolicy.org is his website, and it is excellent, chock full of key, real hard data. Lord Christopher Monckton, third Viscount of Brinchley, of Monckton and Brinchley, and he was a UK Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher's, uh, one of the chief policy advisors, so many other important positions. He has since been a director of his own specialist consultancy company, giving technical advice to corporations and governments. And uh, he is also an award-winning researcher. But uh, rather than go over his lengthy uh, uh, pedigree and, and amazing research, let's go directly to Lord Moncton joining us from the United Kingdom. Sir, it is wonderful to have you with us. It's great to be with you. Amazing. We've got you for a full hour. Our listeners are just absolutely uh, in ecstasy right now because you and your clear, straight, piercing uh, voice and intellect have been one of the main people just just annihilating these frauds. It's good to have you with us. Well, flattery will get you everywhere. You can get up off your knees now, take off the white gloves, and you no, no longer need to touch your forelock. Well, I don't want my children to be slaves to the U.N. and a global government tax. And so I got to tell you, sir, uh, we popped champagne last week when it came out. Those emails uh, were real. Uh, and I would imagine you were popping some champagne. Well, we've been following the people named in these emails for years. We thought they were linked. And, of course, these emails establish exactly how they were linked. And it's very, very interesting because we had suspected there were just about two dozen people who round the world, mostly this side of the Atlantic and in America, who were putting this global warming scam together and actually driving it rather than doing what the likes of Al Gore and the politicians do, just drifting along with it because they don't know any better. These are the people who have known all along that there isn't a problem. And they've been bending the data and admitting to each other they've been bending the data for the sake of concealing the fact that their data are no good. Absolutely. And, and th I mean, this really proves a conspiracy here, doesn't it? You have called for the prosecution of the climate criminals. You were the first. Now many other representatives from Australia to the United States are calling for criminal investigations. There's going to have to be a, a criminal investigation by the information commissioner, whose job is to make sure that publicly available information is available to the public and that officials like these creeps in the Climate Research Center and their colleagues all over the United States as well, uh, were prevented from hiding, destroying, tampering with, shuffling away the data which we paid for, and it therefore belongs to us. And they used a series of excuses. They said, well, there's a Data Protection Act. They said the data belong to other countries, weather bureaus. Hey, this is weather data. It's not a state secret. They were trying to say that uh, they weren't, they were emailing each other. They were saying, we are not going to give this data to anybody. They were even saying they wouldn't write any learned papers for journals which required, as part of the peer review process, that all the data and all the computer code and all the intermediate calculations should be shown and archived so that other scientists could check it. They were determined that other scientists shouldn't be allowed to check their work because they knew that they were simply making things up. These people are financial fraudsters. They took at least $20 million that we can trace in recent years in so-called grants for so-called scientific research, and they did it on the basis of a financial and scientific fraud. So they should not only be locked up, for concealing and destroying data that have been requested under the Freedom of Information Act by other scientists, they should also be locked up for financial fraud and international racketeering. Well said, uh, sir. We're going to come right back after this quick break with a long segment, and I would like to blow by blow get your detailed knowledge of this, uh, some of the history who these people are, what their bigger goals are, and then specifically right through ClimateGate, all the different sectors of fraud that they have engaged in, like covering up the FOIA request, persecuting scientists, colluding to persecute people, which is racketeering, uh, which is extortion, uh, fraud, grant fraud, and now their response saying, so what? Well, for the rest of the hour, Lord Christopher Moncton, Third Viscount of Moncton and Brinchley worked at the highest levels of the UK government at 10 Downing Street with one of the chief advisors to then Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. 
You can find out more about his uh, bio by visiting his website. We'll give that out again repeatedly before he leaves us. Um, but some stations just joined us recapping. Lord Moncton, tell us about yourself. You've been talking about this for more than a decade. Uh, and now what Climate Gate means, the different sectors of fraud, and how uh, you believe from your perspective uh, this should be prosecuted. For those who haven't uh, come across Climate Gate, this was the release of uh, a large number of emails between about two dozen malevolent, crooked scientists right at the top of the climatological tree. These are the people who, between them, have conspired to invent and then maintain the scare of global warming. And the emails came from the University of East Anglia's Climatic Research Center, which specializes in calculating the global temperature record for the whole world over the last 150 years since we first began having what one might call global um, instrumental coverage with thermometers all over the world. And it's quite a complex process because very few of the temperature stations remain in the same place for any length of time. They come in and out. Some work, some stop working. Some don't report properly. Some don't report at all. Whole chunks of Russia disappeared in 1990 when the uh, Berlin Wall came down. So it's very difficult, actually, to make sense of all this data. But unfortunately, what they were doing at the Climate Research Center with active assistance, from many other climate scientists around the world, was they were simply making up the 20th century record of temperatures. So we don't even know how much warmer it has got over the 20th century. We know, broadly speaking, it's got warmer because it's been getting warmer for 300 years, nothing to do with us. But we didn't know how much. And the whole idea of having this very elaborate international network of temperature stations with people going and looking in little boxes and making a note of the temperature every day and then phoning their local weather bureau and that then being passed on to just two or three places around the world, of which East Anglia was one where they compile these records. This was an enormously elaborate piece of work. And then when it got to East Anglia and the other and the two American universities where this was processed, what they did then, as we now know, because we've seen their computer code and we've seen their data, they didn't store the data properly. They didn't keep it in an organized form. They, they didn't know by the end of it what their own computer programs were doing, but they were processing all of the data several times over, and it had become a complete mess. And essentially, they were simply making up the temperature increases of the last 20 years. It is simply a fiction. It's science fiction. Well, expanding on that, and of course you obviously have read the emails, they talk about temperatures are dropping how do we fix it how do we spin it uh how do we hide the decline uh and then of course there's the whole area of how they're talking about keeping people out of journals persecuting journals blocking for your request working with government officials to block this information from the public i mean this is racketeering it is racketeering i think i think it does it is nicely covered by your rico statute and funny enough, we have just put a new act on the, on the statute book a few years ago called the Fraud Act. And this is fraud on our side of the Atlantic and racketeering, as you would call it, on yours. These are people who deserve to go to prison for a very long time. And I'll tell you why I'm so angry about it, because this is a point that nearly always forgotten in all the commentaries about climate change. But global warming isn't killing anyone, and it isn't going to kill anyone. What is killing people and killing them by the million of starvation now is the effect of the global warming scare. Because many nations, including the United States, have taken up to a third of their agricultural land out from growing food for people who needed it to growing biofuels for clunkers that didn't. And that has meant in the last year or two a doubling, and I mean a doubling, of world food prices. And the World Bank says that, that nearly all of that doubling of world food prices is directly attributable to the biofuel scam, which in turn is directly caused by the global warming scare and governments saying, well, even if it isn't true, we've got to take precautions. But you have to remember, you also have to take precautions to check that the precautions you're taking are not killing people by the million, which is what this policy of biofuels is actually doing. And by and the way... All of this scare comes out from these idiots and these crooks and these criminals. And I, I, I'm very sorry I'm not kind of keeping my normal calm self here. No, please. I am so incandescent with 
fury that these people whom we as British taxpayers and you as American taxpayers have been paying to do this work and we have been trusting them to do it right. They have simply not only been making it up, but as you rightly say, they have been tampering with the peer review process, trying to interfere with reviewers to persuade them to pass or not to pass papers they didn't like. They've been trying to bully journal editors whom they don't like into resigning and getting the boards of the papers to appoint, uh, the, the learned journals to appoint somebody else more uh, agreeable to them. They've been interfering with the process of the UN's climate panel itself by saying in one case, here are two papers we don't like because they show that we're wrong. We will make sure that these papers do not ever get anywhere near the uh, UN climate report for 2007, even if we have to redefine the peer review process in order to do it.